Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Today I'm going to be reacting to a particular segment that I've seen uh, from Bill Maher and Mike Tyson. And you're a Muslim? Yeah. Is, is the whole family Muslim? Um, some of my kids, but listen, um, it's my wife and my kids, they have to choose what they want to be. Right. They have to choose. And that. you're okay with that? Absolutely. That is not a point of view that is even allowed in many, many Muslim countries in the world. There is one religion, it is Islam, and well, I believe we're, we're, that, we're not, listen, they're not big on like, hey, you know what, let's agree to disagree. Right, but listen, I'm not Allah. I know, I'm just... See, look at this guy, uh, Bill Maha. First and foremost, he's saying it's not allowed in Muslim countries. There, there's, there's, many, there's layers of problems here. What is a Muslim country exactly? Is it a country with the majority Muslim population? Let's just say that is the case. No problem. Let's go with that. Now, is what happens is a, is a Muslim country representative of what Islam says? No, it's not. Okay, so it's it's not really a good argument. Number three on this point, uh, actually there's many verses in the Quran which very clearly tell us that prophets prophets had their own sons disagreed with them. Their own wives disagreed with them, betrayed them, went against them, didn't believe in what they believed. Noah, for example, was depicted in the Quran as having his son disbelieve or that his son disbelieved and that he went against him. He didn't force him to become uh, a submitter to one God. Lot as well, his wife disbelieved and so on. So the Prophet Muhammad himself, his uncle Abu Talib did not believe in the message of Islam. And then Allah, in the Quran, it says, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبَتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ That you don't guide who you want, but Allah guides whomever He wants. So, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلَيَدِينَ Or the idea that He just negated to you, your religion, and to our to us, ours, is exactly a verse in the Quran. It's not necessarily uh, as He says it. Women who don't want to yeah. wear the fucking, you know, whatever the <laughs> no, thing that judgy, looks like a yeah. cover of a motorboat. Well, there are some people. Some people are more modern than modern yes, than other people. Right. I wish I had the. I wish I had the. Um, I wish I had the dignity to be that modest. Modest. Yeah. Why do you to say cover that's myself. modest? Because they they believe in covering themselves. And, oh. And I'm like you said. I gotta be. Don't care how much money I got. I gotta be in this cheap ass plane with all well, these people and talking to these people. This one thing. To, modest is one thing. Completely covering a woman so you don't see any of her. Well, that's listen, not modest. That's well, listen, pathological. Well, suppose she's. You see, look, he's now defining. Well, what is pathology? Pathology is really a psychological disorder. And what is. I mean, you haven't described to us, if you're saying it's pathological, what exactly. What pathology is it? How do we classify this pathology? It's not, it's not just about using terms here and there, they have to have substance. So what are you diagnosing women who cover in a certain manner with some kind of psychological disorder? Which which disorder is it? We would like to know. The point is, is that who gets to set the criterion of who should wear what? Should it be you, Bill, because you have a big platform and because you're a white American? Should it be your friends and compatriots and colleagues? We believe as Muslims that the one who gets to set the guidelines is God Almighty. The one who gets to tell us what is virtue is God. The one who gets to tell us what is modesty is God. The one who gets to tell us what is honesty is God, and so on and so forth. It's not you who gets to set the, the, those criterion. You have no way of substantiating your morality in the first instance. She's happy with that. She's not, oh my God, she's not happy with it. I mean, you can brainwash someone. How do you know what she's happy with and what she's not happy with? And what is happiness? How do you know what is if she's happy with it or not. This is no longer an academic discussion. This is what, have you surveyed them? Have you spoke to them? And I got a question for you. Do you think that women who wear typical Western dress code, do you think they're happy? Is there any evidence that wearing that makes them more happy than wearing what these other women are wearing? This is a question, this is a, I, honestly. Do you, do you not think potentially there's an argument to be made at least that for women who get to, who are not privatizing their ornaments, yeah, women who are not privatizing their ornaments at least have an, a sense of insecurity which may cause, be a, a cause of depression and anxiety. Could not an argument be made 
that based on uh, sociological and psychological investigations, which link social media, for example, to uh, depression and anxiety, that that is because of an exacerbation of competition uh, metrics, which include but are not limited to one uh, female's ornaments, where a woman now has to compare herself with not just a thousand other women in her village, but a billion other women in the world. Do you not think that that could potentially be a, a cause for her depression and anxiety? Are these not arguments that could be made? So if you're talking about happiness now, what do you think causes happiness? Do you think it's feminism? So if that is the case, then why is it the, why is it the case that the longest, uh, the longitudinal study that was done from 1970s to 2000, Blanche, Blanche Flower and Oswald, indicates a de an increased uh, anxiety and depression of women in the Western world? after so-called reforms were made legislatively in your country. So unfortunately, what, you, what you're saying has no backing and has no substance. I think this Bill Maher has a bit of, he's disrespectful. Even if you don't accept this man's religion or what he's, his faith, you've got to understand you're, you're, sp you're speaking to someone who's contributed majorly to your country's culture. And you're speaking to him with all this, uh, with all this disrespect. Have respect. You might not agree with someone's religious beliefs, yeah, you might not agree with their choice of um, spirituality, but don't sit there and start, you know, in putting yourself in the driver's seat, thinking you're some kind of an interrogator. Who are you? Why do you think? What is this? Where is this sanctimony coming from? Where is this sanctimony coming from, my friend? Why do you think you've got it right? Why do you think all the other world's cultures should kneel in humility to you, great white man? Why do you think that's the case? Who put that entitlement in your head? Was it your followers? Was it was it the, the payment you're getting from whatever news station you're working from? Who exactly put you in this position? Who? That's my question to you. So look, I think you need to be educated with all due respect. Yeah? You need to be educated. Because as, it's, as it stands, you don't really have much of an education. You're culturally dis deplete. You have a lacking of cultural capital. That's you. So next time you speak to someone, even if you disagree with them, unless they're coming, um, it's not understandable. He's not even coming at you with hostility. He's sitting there and you're interrogating him on his religious beliefs. I would suggest that you change your way. And if you don't, then to you, your way, and to me, mine. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.